We are joined in studio by Professor Niall Moyna, the head of the School of Health and Human Performance in DCU. He's been involved with sport, particularly football, senior football at DCU for many years. You might know him from the TV, Doctor in the House. Professor Niall Moyna, thank you for joining us. Delighted to be here and in particular to be able to contribute to this year's Health Best and to see so many kids from around the country being engaged today. Well, it's so important, as you will tell us. Uh, we saw Greg there being active and doing his, his workout, and he's a very active person in general. Why is being active so important? Well, look, there are many, many health benefits to being physically active. In fact, if we could package the known benefits of exercise in a pill, it would be by a mile the most prescribed wonder drug on the planet. Mm. There isn't an organ system that is not positively affected. And that includes your brain, both your physical and your mental health are positively affected by exercise. Simply going out for a walk lowers your blood pressure, it decreases the amount of fat that you have circulating in your bloodstream, it improves the health of your blood vessels and makes you feel better about yourself. The majority of our viewers today are in their prime teenage years. So I suppose exercise changes from when you're a child to a teen to an adult. What is the most important form of exercise that these people should be doing? By a mile, the best form of exercise is the exercise you enjoy. Mm. That's what's important. There isn't one type, there isn't one food that we all eat, so therefore there isn't one exercise that does it all. Whether it's skateboarding, going for a walk, cycling, playing team sports, swimming, it, dancing, it doesn't make any difference. As long as you find an activity that you enjoy and that you sustain that activity, that you do it regularly. And what about weight, say? So say for if, if there's guys or girls watching here, do you recommend at that age? What do you think? That's a great question. Yeah. Particularly, you know, and as soon as you mention the word weights, yeah. young girls will have switched off now. And, and I they want, shouldn't. No, I want them to switch on. Yeah. Because it's very underappreciated, the importance. It's not just weight, it's resistance training. You can, you can develop lean muscle mass, that muscle tone with or without weights. And very importantly, when we reach the age of 30, we start to lose our muscle. Mm -hmm. So basically, before the age of 30, you're depositing your muscle into the, into the muscle bank account. Because after 30, you're withdrawing it. And because young girls don't, obviously, don't have the same hormones as young boys, they're not going to lay down the same amount of muscle as boys. So when they start withdrawing from the bank account, they're withdrawing from a much lower bank account, which means that they're more likely to reach frailty much earlier than boys or men. So what they do now has an enormous impact on when they will, and we hope that none of the young girls listening will ever become frail and that all be able to, to, to go on with their daily lives and walk up and down the stairs and make cups of tea. But you know, someday, you know, based on current evidence in Ireland, 50% of the girls who are listening to this today will one day in their life not be able to get up of a chair because they've lost their muscle. Wow. So it is so important right now before the age of 30 that you lay down, particularly bone and muscle, because after that you're withdrawing from the bank account. And I think the reason a lot of girls will have switched off is because there's this idea in their brains that weights means bulk, and they, that idea isn't good, but it's so not true. Like you have to be like seriously training and eating mad amounts of protein and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's not about that. It's virtually impossible. It's one chance in 10 billion yeah. that any female will put on anywhere near the same muscle bulk because they don't have the hormone testosterone. Yeah. That increases in young boys as they go through puberty. Girls don't have it. What girls will get is an improvement in muscle tone, mm. but the strength of the muscle actually increases without increasing its size. Okay. The school's fitness challenge you've been heavily involved in. Tell us what these studies have shown. Well, you know, this, we have now been doing it for 10 years. Mm -hmm and we have collected data on 210,000 Irish kids between the ages of 12 and 16. And what it tells us is, it was designed in such a way it was to promote getting people who were inactive to get them involved, because the way it works is that the, whoever improves, the, so it's a six week intervention to see whose fitness improves the most. And basically those who get the most, the biggest improvement in fitness are those who start with the lowest level. So they get the biggest bang for their buck. So if you're listening and you're doing nothing, getting up and doing something, you're going to get far more benefits than someone who was already physically active. Right. And the second thing we found that in just six weeks, you get an, on, a, on average an 8 to 10% improvement in your fitness. Now, if you look at in adults, that would result in a 15% reduced risk and you're dying from any cause. Wow. 
wow. in six weeks. There's no drug, there's no pharmacological drug that can do what this wonderful drug called exercise does. We won't use the word excuses, we'll change it to obstacles. What are the main obstacles that you hear from people when it comes to just not feeling it in terms of exercise? Is it that their head is, just isn't in it? Is it that maybe you know, they weren't brought up to think it was important? What, what is it? I think there are a few things, and particularly young girls again, but many young boys as well. There's a perception out there, unless you're playing sport and you're very fit, there's no point in doing it. Mm. It couldn't be further from the truth. There's two types of fitness. There's what we call sport fitness, so fitness we need to play elites or any type of sport, and then we have something called health-related fitness. What fitness do you need for optimal health? And that's your cardiovascular fitness, optimal body composition so you're, you don't have excess body fat, good balance, and muscular strength and endurance. Now, that's the first thing. And you don't need to, to do a lot of exercise to improve each of those components of health-related fitness. But I understand kids today. They live in a different world than I grew up in. I mean, this is the first generation of human beings that we have to find ways to get them to be physically active. Because our genes, all throughout evolution, we've been physically active. In order to procure food, to, to stay alive, we had to be able to hunt and gather. And it's only since the Industrial Revolution, and particularly since the Digital Revolution, that we're now engineering activity out of our lives. It's becoming, we have to find out, we have to put time in our day to be physically active, yeah. when we just did it incidentally throughout the course of history. So I think it's very important that you find the time. And it's not about playing sport, it's about... If every single person in secondary school during the school day walked for 30 minutes, whether doing it 15 minutes in the morning or 15 minutes in the afternoon, we would probably reduce our healthcare budget within 30 years by around $5 billion or euro a year. Why? Because we currently spend 90% of our healthcare budget treating chronic diseases that are due to lifestyle, due to our diet and due to our lack of activity and smoking. Wow. Those stats are huge. Uh, we, we will have Dr. Keelan Murphy here today to talk about um, in, in our healthy diet segment, but in terms of diet in relation to exercise, like we're living in a world now where a lot of people watching today, social media is so big, uh, it's a massive part of their lives, and they see all of this, you know, you know, certain food types are like the devil, and then other food types are like the holy grail, and it's like these extremes. What is your advice for just day-to-day you know, eating things that are going to help you, you know, and, and be part of an active lifestyle. You know, it's, it's even I'm confused, Yeah. you know, and it, it is difficult. But you know something, you know, the people who really push these extremes, mm. we don't live in the extremes. You know, the 70% of us live in the middle of the standard curve. That's where everyone lives. And we have to figure out how do we live there. And my advice to people is, you know, pick the foods that you like, number one, as long as they're healthy, you're getting your macro and micronutrients. That's what's important. Mm. But if you're consuming a diet that's way out there, you know, that the vast majority of the population does not consume, the likelihood is that you will not continue to consume that diet. We know we need our carbohydrates, we know we need our macronutrients, we know we need our proteins and our fats. People forget that every single cell, we have trillions of cells in our body, mm -hmm. The lining of those cells is made of cholesterol. So we need fat in our diet. And coming back again about young girls, a very important statistic is that by the age of 18, most young girls would have laid down about 85% of the maximal amount of bone that they will lay down in their lifetime. Wow, by 18? And by 18. And so that's why it's between the ages of 8 and 18 that they should be getting their calcium and doing their weight-bearing exercise to ensure that by the time they reach 30, because that's when you're at maximum, they have the maximum amount of bone that they will deposit. So again, like frailty, we don't want them to develop brittle bones and osteoporosis prematurely either. To finish, your key messages for people, so it's, it's the new year and it, that's always seen as a kind of fresh start for people and we don't have to do a whole brand new me, it can be small changes. So what would your key messages be for anyone watching today who wants to just be that little bit healthier? Pick activities that you enjoy and, you, and that you can sustain. Simple. Professor Nalmoyne, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.